Okay, well, here it is. What is it? It is a really stupid robot. It's the stupidest robot possible. It has no brain whatsoever. It has no idea what it's doing. It doesn't even know what is attached to it. Uh, what it does know is uh, that uh, every few generations, actually, so every time it's gone through a series of generations, it uh, adds up how many times this little passive infrared sensor has been triggered. And uh, that uh, becomes its fitness for and the genetic output. So in here, barely visible. Uh, an AT Tiny 85 and Sparkfoam's Tiny Programmer, and a very simple circuit, really almost nothing there. There's a resistor, I think, only for the LED, and uh, a couple of connectors for the servos. Uh, there's a switch here that I can use to manually add uh, add scores to a, a generation, if I feel like it. And a little LED that indicates uh, which generation is currently being tested. I think that was number 6 or 7. And uh, also indicates when they have scored, if they manage to uh, get this thing uh, to trigger the passive infrared sensor. Now, you can barely see the sensor because I've covered most of it up with tape, almost all of its peripheral, just barely in front uh, here, where it can still actually see if something passes in front of it. You see, when I do this, it thinks it's it's been fed. So that was actually one of the organisms right there. So one of the GAs, we're using GA, if we're going to use GA ter tech terminology here, uh, that was one of the GAs that was just sitting there doing nothing. Uh, no, that's not a very successful organism if you just sit there doing nothing, but it is an organism. Probably that one, that DNA set, probably did not get transferred on to future generations. Uh, their lifespans are very short. Uh, I think he's about 60 seconds. One of them is running right now, and uh, he's not doing very much. The GA does not know what it is attached to. It doesn't know um, what are servos or how to operate them. Uh, it simply has a bunch of random data, which then is subjected to repeated, of course, a repeated series of um, genetic random mutation and natural selection i.e. What we, what we also refer to as evolution. Uh, so in this case, it's being tested as a box uh, sitting on top of two servos. The servos are plugged in, and uh, I don't even know which pins they're plugged into because it doesn't really matter. Uh, the thing just figures it out. So Obviously, the power and ground are, are plugged into the proper pins, but the other ones, I don't know, there are two of the other pins. Uh, the DNA code actually... Uh, inevitably decides to start sending data to pins. What kind of data? Who knows? That's part of the procedurally generated D, uh, DNA. And again, that's subjected to random mutation and natural selection. So in case you're wondering, what? A bunch of big glob of random data being interpreted randomly without any knowledge of what's connected to what? That can't possibly work. And you're right. Initially, it doesn't work very well. But over time, when subjected to random mutation and natural selection, well, you know the rest of the story. You can look around you, look at the birds and the bees and the flowers and the monkeys in the trees. And uh, you and me, both the possibly most, most popular, at least, of the great apes currently. So we're only in a few generations in, and uh, you'll see it's already already come to some success, but obviously a much more successful uh, uh, genetic uh, type, a much more successful DNA would be moving it back and forth or something, something very efficient. So we'll let it run for a while, and then I'll check in on it later, and uh, it will actually be getting a lot more done.